Hey everybody, welcome back to our Dynamic Pages video series. Now we're almost there. We've connected our data set to a collection in our builder, and our final step to complete this integration is to convert our listings page template into a living dynamic page. And we can do that simply by selecting Pages, going to our single property page, selecting the gear icon, and we'll select Convert to Dynamic Page. Now we're prompted to select a collection, and we already have our collection set up, so all we have to do is drop down the menu, and we'll select Ashton's listings, and click Done. Nice. Now we're still seeing the filler content from the builder, and that's okay. What we need to do now is designate which items on the page connect to which field items from the sheet. So let's start with listing title. We'll right-click on the text box, and select Connect to Data. Now we need to tell the builder which piece of information needs to be pulled for this particular text box, and we'll find our listing title field. There it is, listing title. Let's select it and click Done. And now we can see an actual title from our spreadsheet filling the space, which will populate uniquely for each individual listing page once this is published. Next, let's do listing address. Select connected data. We have address there. There we go. Next, we'll do price. All right. And now short description. Awesome. Now let's do our gallery. Let's select connect to data once again. Now this one's going to work a bit differently since we're connecting to a full gallery. So from the first drop down, we can see our inner collection here called Ashton's Listings Gallery. So let's select it. And there we go. We can now see the images already populating behind our workspace here. And since we only created one line item for the inner collection, there's nothing to edit here. But if you wanted to create more lines to the inner collection to have more elements showing in the gallery, you would add it back where we created the inner collection and assign it a line item here. Scrolling down the page, let's cover our last couple of sections here. The overview text can be left alone because this is just a label for this section. But for the long description text, let's again connect this to our data. But this time I want to show you a shortcut that saves a few clicks. I'm going to simply type three of these little squiggly brackets here. Now this automatically pulls up the option to link to a collection without the need to right click and select connect to data. So we'll select the description line item. There we go. Over to the right, let's use our new trick for the remaining text field. So we'll click in the text field for agent name and type those brackets. And that pulls up the connected data collection selection menu. All right. Next is contact info. And finally, our button text. Now, we don't have an external link set up for an individual agent page, but here where it says connect link is where you could configure that. And here for text on button, we'll select the corresponding field. Lastly, let's click on the agent photo and connect to data. This one will be agent image. There we go. So let's recap. We started out with a spreadsheet of various real estate listings. We imported that content into a collection in our builder and we linked that collection to a newly created dynamic page to showcase each listing on their own unique page, saving us the hassle of creating each one individually. But now there's one final step. How do we find these pages? And the answer is truly up to you, but let me show you one cool way. Let's jump to a different page of our site. Right here I have a page set up for all of my listings, but this can be integrated literally anywhere on your site. Now, this listings page isn't dynamic. This is just a normal page on your site that we can navigate to. But the idea here is to create a place for people to navigate to all the different listing pages that our dynamic page has created. Beneath our title text here, all we have is a regular gallery widget pulled from our widgets library. It's still showing the stock imagery and text. And we've done a bit of customization by placing the title and description beneath the image with a background fill. But essentially, this is just a regular gallery widget that can be dropped anywhere your heart desires. So what we're going to do is link this gallery to our dynamic page to allow your visitors to navigate to any of the dynamically generated listing pages. So let's right click on the gallery and just like before, we'll select connect to data. And very simply, let's drop down the list and we'll select Ashton's listings. Awesome.
And now we need to connect the individual gallery elements. So starting with image, we'll connect this to main image, again from our spreadsheet. For title, let's make this the price. And for description, let's make this our short description from the spreadsheet. Now for link, this is where we connect it to our dynamic page for single property. And down here for link text, I'm actually going to put the title of the listing. Perfect. Let's click done. So now what we have is a functional gallery showcasing all listings from our spreadsheet, allowing the visitor to click into any individual listing page. And by using our dynamic page, we've opened the door for ourselves to create an unlimited amount of listing pages without ever having to design a page for it ever again. Let's do a preview of this page. And let's click on Dixie Darlin Home. And like magic, every piece of info corresponding to this listing is populated here on our page. Title, price, image gallery, description, agent, all fitting seamlessly into the design that we created only once. Let's go back to the All Listings page. And now let's click into Rustic Brooklyn Brownstone. And once again, a completely new listing page with all the proper info displaying beautifully. Now, as we can expect, now that this dynamic page is alive and well, we can manage all the content for our listings, including changes to the listings, as well as additions to it, all from the spreadsheet where it all started. So here we can see this listing is priced at $960,000, but let's say we wanted to drop the price to a flat $900,000. Let's jump back to our Airtable, and we'll locate our line for the Rustic Brooklyn Brownstone, locate the price field, and we'll simply change it. I'll enter $900,000 and hit enter. And that's it. Now one thing to keep in mind with these dynamic pages is that the changes might not be immediate. The collection automatically scans for new information every couple of hours, so if you don't see the change right away on the live page, just give it a little bit of time. However, if you do have updates that need to be immediate, there is a way you can force the collection to scrape for new information instantly. So back in the builder, in the editor, let's click on content and into collections. And here for Ashton's listings, let's click on the gear icon, and we're going to select Refresh Data. And that's it. We'll notice now that our All Listings page refreshes automatically to pull in any data that we've changed. And in the grid here, we can see the price for the brownstone has been updated. And if we preview, we can click into the Listings page for it, and the price is updated there as well. Now really quick, I'm just going to give you guys a few tips and tricks regarding the collections. You will likely need to add additional things to your spreadsheet. So for example, say I wanted to add a county column to my spreadsheet. After you add this to the spreadsheet, you need to manually add this as a new field in your collection. So while the collection scans automatically for new data, it can't add a new field automatically. So back in our Ashton's listings collection, we can click this add field link and then add the name of the field exactly as the column is named in the spreadsheet. If you're finding that you have to add a ton of new fields, one option would be to delete the collection and then simply create a new collection and link it back to the same spreadsheet. And one last thing, if you're noticing that things don't seem to be updating, this can be caused by your browser's cache. This will cause older information to be stored and displayed instead of the newer information. And this will fix itself in time, but there are a few things you can do to override this situation if you like. A simple first step would be to refresh both your spreadsheet in the browser, whether that's Airtable or Google Sheets, and the builder page in your browser. And if that doesn't do the trick, you can clear your cache in your browser. And if you're ever unsure whether cache is a factor, you can always pull up the builder or a preview of your site in your browser's anonymous mode or incognito mode for Chrome. These browser modes don't use cache data. All right, guys, I know that was a long one, so thanks again for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to talk a little bit more about page URLs and the SEO for your dynamic pages. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon.